after another snowy night and a half day of snow scheduled for this day, we are on a mission to pick up some materials to keep moving forward with this barn and really making some headway. We've got about six inches of fresh snow here on our frontage road, and that gets less as we get closer to the county roads and the state roads as we drop in elevation. Earlier in my life, I spent about 11 years working at the city government level in the motor pool department. In my position, I was responsible for all of the maintenance and repairs, as well as the acquisitions and sales of all equipment that was owned by the city. Because my division was part of the public works department, I had the opportunity to learn a lot of things about all things public works, including culinary water systems, storm water systems, sanitary sewer systems, and road construction and maintenance, which in this part of the country heavily includes snow plowing during the season. Looking back on my life at this point, I can't help but be extremely grateful for the experiences earned and the knowledge gained from working alongside some amazing mentors in all of these departments. Without them, I'm not sure I would be where I'm at, or at least much less successful at the attempt building this farm and creating this lifestyle up on the mountain. My hope is that by sharing these videos, I can help distribute some of their knowledge that they gave to me to help others grow the way that I did. Every day I'm challenged, and every day I look back, reflect on some knowledge, apply it, and learn more along the way. A good example of that knowledge cycle is that after all of the turkey chasing I've done over the last two weeks, I come around the corner right now and my knee-jerk reaction is, oh man, I should stop and help this guy get his turkeys back in. Then I remember instantly, duh, these are wild turkeys. All along this county road, they're in everybody's yard right now. In fact, it's very common this time of year to have several of them hit on the road as you drive. You see they come all the way up and down this hillside here and they surprise you as they jump and fly up in front of you to get across the road and up onto the hillside. They come and wander through the mountains, they come down into the people's yards, and especially if they have farm animals and the associated feed in their yards. Got the last of our bang board plywood for the walls and insulation. <laughs> Stuff like marshmallows in there. We got it to fit though. 30 bags of insulation all together. We're good. You can see on our way home how close the car ahead of me was to hitting a couple of those turkeys as they crossed the highway. Now that we're back onto this county gravel road, it's time to switch back into four-wheel drive again. This road is gravel and is considered non-maintained during the winter or minimal maintenance during the winter. But it's such a popular access road for everybody in the county that they do a fairly good job of plowing it during the winter. Our frontage road, however, is three miles of little to no county maintenance. That's why it's up to us to keep the road open for ourselves during the winter time. Now that we're on our way home and the snow has finally stopped for the day, I'll come back through and plow this all out so that it's opened up for all of us. 
if you paid attention to the footage at the beginning compared to now, you can see a substantial difference in the county roads that were plowed in the morning and through the day and salted and sanded, as well as the state roads that were plowed and sanded and salted as well, compared to our road that gets plowed once the storm is done. I have to say, Idaho State and Utah State both do such an amazing job of keeping these roads cleared. It doesn't seem to matter how much snow comes down in a series of storms, but usually within 24 to 36 hours at the end of a storm, they've got it down to black top surface and usually not even very wet. As a little side note, this little section of road here, we kind of refer to as the road to the sun. And I'm pretty sure that I stole that from a street bike trip we took several years back to Glacier National Park. And they have a road very similar, but much more pretty. Boy, I'm sure glad we took a mostly enclosed trailer to get these materials. I'm going to go plow. I got home with the materials. I plowed my roads before we went into town this morning. Um, just to make sure that they were clear enough that when we got back, I could get all the way up our driveway pulling the trailer. And I'm glad I did. Looks like we got about another two inches of snow after I plowed. So I'm going to hop on the tractor, just go make a single pass in and out on the road. One thing that experience has taught me is that every time I have to plow, I want to leave this tractor as high on the mountain as I can. In the years past, we would leave the tractor up here or we would have it down at our house and we'd haul it up here in between storms to come and open up our roads to get in here. And there is plenty of times when it's all I can do to even drive up the road, let alone push the snow out of the way to get up there. So I've learned over the years, leave it high and let gravity help me get the snow cleared. Even if I have to hike into the tractor, I can at least drop the blade and plow and let gravity help me push the snow out. Once that first pass is cleared, I can always drive back up that pass to get to the top and start pushing again. Even if that means that I can only take another foot at a time, eventually I'll get the entire road width cleared. With that experience and other similar knowledge floating around in the back of my head, I try to make the best decisions that I can during the moment while I'm plowing the snow. Sometimes it's the right one and sometimes not so correct. But ultimately, I learn from every one of these experiences. Everything was going pretty smooth up until this point. As I come up the hill, the tractor started to chug chug and I realized I was almost out of fuel. So I backed out of the pile put into high range, and hit the road. I'm about a mile and a half from home, and I certainly didn't want to run out of fuel and have to huff it back all that way in the dark and cold. You can see as I come up some of these hills, it chugs a few more times, and then I finally get it there and realize, if I turn around and back this thing home, I'm going to make it. It just so happens that the fuel outlet on my tank of this tractor is toward the front. So if my tractor is pointing downhill, all of the fuel runs toward the front of the tank and I get just a little bit more. So I flipped it around and I backed up as fast as I could to get back to fuel, which was on the back of my truck. Eight and a half gallons of fuel later, I'm ready to keep going and finish this job. So, 
get back on the tractor and start pushing down and realize I better just switch my blade angles to the other direction and use gravity on my side to just plow my way back to where I ended. That way I'm done and then I can do a little bit of cleanup on the way back and not have to worry about any of it. And I'll have the roads pushed open a little farther than I had initially planned, which is better in the long run. Once you start losing road width with snow, you don't gain it back unless you start digging hard. That bit of light in the distance that kind of looks like a pair of headlights in the fog and faded is actually the moon shining through the little bit of cloud and fog as it's just coming up over the top of the mountains. As I'm approaching my driveway on this finishing pass, and I do a few little cleanup pushes in a few spots on mine, I decide, man, I'm already on the tractor, I'm already going, I may as well make just one more little bit of a cleanup pass just to help push things back a little bit farther and be a little bit more prepared for the next bout of snow that comes in our way. As I come back into my driveway, I make sure that I push out a couple more spots that are key access points just to kind of clean things up a little bit and back it up just so that we're ready to go for the next time. The next day was cloudy in patches, but ultimately a really nice day. So we needed to get these materials unloaded and into the shop where they would be out of the weather and not have any problems. With Everest's help, we made really quick work of getting all this material unloaded. After that, we need to start figuring out a few things for some planning details so that we can start moving forward with these materials. When Ola and I come together on a project, she usually gives me inspiration for the idea. I end up taking that idea and overthinking it a little bit and then really trying to make it into something special. That being said, we tend to have a lot of discussions about the planning and the project as it goes forward. We also take time out to do a lot of discussions and make sure that we're on the same page as we go forward with the plan. This is something that we feel is very important so that we know we're on the same page and we both think through it from our own perspective. No, actually that's one of the walls. That's one on the walls? Yeah, that's the one on the east end walls, the big walls. That's the stuff from then. And then, did you see the tray? Is that full? It's like marshmallows. <laughs> Pulling out the back. Dang. It's stacked. It's stacked? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Stacked and stuff. So tell me where the lights are going to be. Are you going to put lights inside the battery room, right? You were seeing two puff lights? Yeah, it's not a huge space. Because we're talking about storage shelves for jars and stuff, we got the batteries and the inverter, that kind of stuff in there. It's like you need good light, but I don't think you need like workspace light. Okay. So I think two of those six so inch, two six inch puff lights. Room, I think. Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> How was that? Uh, it's getting bright there at the time. I bet. Start to pack and settle in. Okay. It's a good day it. for us. It. Just above freezing, so it's a nice, perfect day to settle that snow. Where are you going to cap the ceiling at the very top? Oh, the ceiling where it's gonna. What is it called? We well, you can put the, the ceiling like that. Are you just gonna do it at the very top? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Translate that. You are going to put a ceiling up, right? You, where I you mean, are going to put drywall ceiling up. Okay, but how are you, where are you going to be at? Like, it, goes right, being... it goes right against the trusses. Okay, right across right. the bottom. We'll be that tall. Yep, we're right across Thank the trusses. You. Gosh, that took a minute. Okay, well, that'd be good. So the thicker stuff goes on these walls because they're thicker. They're just... So, how do you want to get started? Do you want to go from top Let's to do... bottom? Um, bottom bottom. 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 Probably bottom because we're going to put plywood up first. We don't have drywall yet. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. We can go fast along the bottom and we can put plywood up. 
Okay, so just get rid of the two. Yeah, that clears out a lot of space. Okay. And then we can do the upper walls and the ceiling cap. Our fireplace is going to be here Thursday. So that's five days. Yeah. So if we can get insulation hung, we're blowing insulation on top of it. We're spraying it on top of it. That'll, that'll get us covered, skin, so we can actually warm it up in here to get the drywall on and get and the dry. mud. Because if that mud's never going to dry up here, it'll freeze. Oh, so it'll freeze and crack. No, yeah. It won't look good. Enough. So we need to be able to heat it up through the mud. We probably should frame in this before we hang the drywall. All the outlets would be external conduit. Okay. The lighting we're going to do in wall. Okay. Right, that's what we talked about doing yeah. in wall. So our light switches would go at this door. All three or yeah, just? I think so. This is going to be your main entrance. It is. If you pull up here, you're not going to pull up here and walk all the way down there to come in here as your main entrance. Yeah, but what if I'm doing something out here? Oh, well, I guess you're okay. And we can run multiple switches, but that's different wiring. We've got to run a three-way wire. And then you're talking about three-way switches. And I just, I, I, I just don't think it needs to be that complicated. It is a shop, I gotta remember that. Okay, one, two, or, cause you're getting six lights, so this is three, six lights, and I'm putting up to three. How are you gonna lay it out? I think we'll center down this, this 16 foot space that we have here. Okay. 16 and a half, or whatever it is. You're gonna work on a truck, you're gonna do some maintenance on a truck or a trailer or something. It's gonna come in here. And this is where you're gonna be working, right? Yeah. If you're gonna be building something, well, that probably go over there, kind of tucked out of the way. Yeah. It can be done there and still come in and out right here this way. What kind of lighting do you want over there then? So what I think we do is, because that's kind of shorter and this is kind of a deeper bay, mm -hmm. I think we use six lights and the one, two, three, four, across the top, and one, two. Oh, this is going to be nice. Yeah. So I, the, after you're telling me everything, I really think you should only need to have two, two switches. You know, we talked about having three different yeah. zones. I think you should just have two zones. You want me to tell you why I think that? Yeah. Because ultimately, when you get your garage door, it's all going to be dark. So right now, we've got really good lighting. Yep. So when you have these two lights on, and you have the garage door that's bringing in the light, that's great. You've got good lighting. But you're not going to have that all the time. You're going to have the garage door shut. So you're going to need some, like, overall lighting and I think you're gonna have a ton more like dimmer space that will impact this working area. So the benefit so I completely agree with everything you just said. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it needs a third switch. Like if, let's say you're doing mechanic stuff and it's super dim over here and you're only having enough light here but you don't have like enough you still have like darkness and stuff. But so I can turn on the switch is what I'm saying. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you just wanted to have as an option, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, if the door is up and it's blocking the lights, I don't want them to be on. If it's block being blocked anyway, well, I want to be able to turn them off. I say just you. wire it, wire it anyway. I guess <laughs> <laughs> I just thought was trying to save you some time. No, so you're it is fine. A pain. It's really not a big deal. Okay, so you're gonna have your three sets of switches for the lights. You're gonna run wire. And it's going to connect over here to the panel. Where's your panel going to be? Where's your main? The panel's going to be up in the battery room. Okay, so it'll be in there. And yeah. then, so then you have wires to go into for the kitchen. Yeah. You can, are you going to zone like kitchen yeah. and yeah. then the thing and then the area? Yeah, because yeah, the kitchen's going to take a decent amount of power. We're going to have. I want plenty of outlets on the walls along the countertops so that no matter what we're. I don't even want like fours in there. Yeah, that's what I got with duplexes. Okay, because so I was like, there. I want doubles in there. Yeah. That's one of the things, like, every kitchen that I've been in, never enough outlets. If you're doing something and you're running things, you just need to have plenty yeah. of outlets, plenty of options. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. <clears throat> yeah, and so then, duplexes in there. So. You're not going to have anything for here. Do you enter we'll from this door? Do you have any light switch here? Not no. entry light, no. You're going to do it to this bay then? I wasn't going to. For this area? No. I was going to keep all the main lights at that door. At that door, okay. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I was just I don't asking. think so either. 
But like I said, when, you know, ultimately, you're not going to pull up and drive in the lean-to to here. And you're not going to pull up and park there and bypass this door and walk all the way down to this door to get into the building. Yeah. You, when you come up here, you walk up, that's where you get, you're not going to scale the rock wall. <laughs> so, so you're going to walk around. Yes, I am. Which, yeah. <laughs> I can see you now. You got you come showing up here. You got a harness and carabiners everywhere, and your toe shoes. I didn't do it. Your <laughs> bag of towel I'm here. You're like you're like come walking in the front door. Where do I hang my climbing gear? <laughs> I just scaled the boulder wall. Yeah, that's me. Oh, those two. I want you to go down the hill and just watch those two in pursuit. I am really cold. I I am kind of cold. Oh, look at the turkeys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where's the seventh one? He's up there this morning. Go play. Go on. Go on. You are kind of my ride or die there, dog. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, look at the dog. Oh. You really can make it all the way home there. I feel like we gotta start closing that ceiling then and, and I hope your garage door, hope you get some answers on it. It's just so cold in there. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> I'm taking a week off to hang out with you. I'm just, I'm like right now, I'm like questioning my See, decisions. You're, so you're giving me three days to get all the insulation in. I know it's much more popular too watch the project progress and be completed than it is to listen to the discussions of the planning process. But it's such an important part of this process that I thought we should share some of this conversation as it happens. Okay, so just really quickly, we have a sink coming in here. Where did yeah. you say the, uh, the water heater would be? Is it well, I think it makes wall? sense here on the wall mounted okay. up because our, our inlet's right here. Okay. So we can come from there through the water softener and into the water heater. How come you don't want to use this wall for that? Um, just because the water line is clear over here. I don't want to have to come okay. all the way over here and then all the way back. All right. I think it makes, if our, I mean, our sink drain is right here, so our sink will be here. I think it makes the most sense to have the water heater closest. So you're not running a bunch of water line to wait for the hot water to get there. What's your plan for this wall? What were you thinking about over here? I don't have everything laid out. I don't really know. I don't know if it makes sense to have like shelf storage here for like your equipment. And yeah, like big pots and your pots and pans, your tubs, your different things like that. Be able to. That's not a bad idea. Shelf store it kind of here out of the way. Mm -hmm. Dishes and utility here, right? So you've right. got your water heater mounted up on the wall, the water softener next to it here. Um, and then your sink space. On this this wall here is the one I, I thought it'd be best to put like a rolling island. Mm -hmm. So we can push it against the wall here and have it here just to do what we need. Yeah. Then if we need to bring it out here to the middle space where we can get all the way around it, we can slide it away from the wall and work. Yeah, that sounds good. Workspace there, maybe. I don't yeah, know. this corner would be the most effective to make like an L shaped yeah. for as far as like the space and stuff goes. Yeah, for workspace. So as far as outlets go, I'd want to load that up a load bit. That up yeah, way. so I would say probably a few outlet boxes here, right here. I'd probably load this do up. like one, two, three, maybe four. I don't know, a bunch. I'd do three because if there's four outlets. That's 12 things that you'd want to get plugged in. That's a lot. That's maybe excessive. It maybe even is. two would probably be fine. It probably is excessive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just doing. And then having one core box here. For the gas line, are you going to just have it out here? I think because we'll have the wood stove in that corner in the shop. Uh huh. I think I'll probably bring the gas line in here. Oh, that's a good idea. 
You don't want it to get too hot and blow your shop up. (laughs) That would suck. I was going to run that on the surface of the wall. I didn't want to run it through the wall. What do you mean? Why wouldn't you want it inside the wall? I don't know. And if I needed to add to it, I can get to it. It's not buried in the wall. You just want access to it? Yeah. Okay. Are you insulating this wall then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were going to insulate this and the, room and the ceiling in here too. Oh. We were gonna... I just hate insulation. <laughs> I didn't buy this flooring insulation yet. So. Oh, okay. Phew. <laughs> That's good. I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't buy 16-inch stuff for this wall either. Okay. So That's you're great. Good for a minute. <laughs> you're good, good for, for a day or two. Yeah. For now, we could probably put our hundred pound on there, but mm-hmm. next year we were talking of getting a couple of tanks. Like for real, for real, for yeah, like three hundred gallon tanks or something. Yeah. So we'll probably put one out here where it's still accessible for the truck to deliver. Oh, and it's going to look so good with my outdoor cafe. Yeah. It's going to be... <laughs> It'll be tucked back in the trees out of the way hidden. It's not like one of the neighbors, but one of the houses down the road where they have like a camouflage <laughs> yeah. thing cover. I want, I want that. Yeah, I want that for the propane tanks. Yeah. Are you going to have the panel lower or up at the top? Up at the upstairs? Yeah, upstairs. Upstairs, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing. When we have the gas line in here, we could have like we could come off of that to be able to put like a, a even one that comes up on the top, you know, sets on the top a countertop like two a burner. Cook- oh, two burner? Just a little two burner cooker or something. We have a couple. Well, you can't have it like installed. We might have to talk about the design a little bit. Yeah. You're making it sound way too industrial. I'm I'm looking at it as more of a kitchen. I'm looking at it more industrial. <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to sit down <laughs> on a couple of things. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't th- I don't like that idea at all. Okay. I would rather just turn a knob and it fires up and there it is. I don't know. We can do whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can do whatever. <laughs> I'm like, uh <laughs> I wanted some stainless steel stuff and some... That's a good countertop. I'd be fine with that, but just maybe putting a gas cooker in there. Okay. (laughs) And then like some drawers that open up. Kitchen, babe. We're looking at a kitchen design here. I know. I don't know. I think we're on two different... Two different waves here. I'm feeling a different energy from you. No, it's all good. (laughs) It's all good. I'm, uh, I'm just thinking of like a, you know, processing animals and processing things down. You know how you were thinking about when you put your meat on hooks or whatever and you want to slide them? This wouldn't be a bad right here, like this middle section. Kind of a little rolly. A track in here. But then you want rolling things out. So this is where this one would come in and move. Yeah, roll it out or... so when, we, when we're breaking them down, we can break them down mm-hmm. to the table and break them right off the... Yeah, I don't want anything custom, but I definitely want it to look clean. Yeah, it so. would be nice to put in a couple of hook points on the ceiling. I think you should. I think or just in case, a track or something. Yeah, that would be Just in case, idea. just to... Because it's, it's so much handier when I can hang the meat and break it down on the hook. It's so much easier. Mm-hmm. You think about how you're going to use it when you're going to use it, and you're thinking, oh, yeah, we'll probably need to do like this, we'll probably need to do like that. Yeah. You know, probably. You know, the temperatures today, I think, melted majority of the ice down here <laughs> that I threw down. It melted some. Yeah, it sure. did good. For sure. Okay, well, let's get some boxes up, or do yeah. you want to do something else? You have me for a minute, so... And then you have me this week, so you have to figure out what I can do. You want to put boxes in? You can do that, can't you? I guess I could, yeah. Just yeah, give me a hammer yeah. and... But I got to make sure I measure it right. You have to tell me what the measurements would be. Yeah. 